July 25, 1967 was Howie Bedell night at the Reading Phillies, when the Pottstown native and former Major League outfielder was to be honored at Municipal Stadium. But the biggest star that night turned out to be Steve Arlen, who tossed the first and wildest no-hitter in team history. I'll never forget because he had a large contingency from my hometown, which is just around the corner in Pottstown. And a lot of people went to a lot of trouble, Mr. Quinn and I think at that time and some others. Uh, they had some dignitaries there and it was a, was a, it was a super evening. Uh, really, at that point, uh, I was to the point where I understood it, but it was somewhat embarrassing because, you know, the guys want to just play baseball. You know, they, they, they feel for you and they, they like nice things happening to their buddies and all that business. But, uh, you know, sometimes it gets a little old. And I think in my mind, I was thinking, geez, I, I would like to get this thing over as fast as it could get over. Nothing that night would get over fast. A scheduled doubleheader with York was delayed 100 minutes by a downpour before first pitch. With a good crowd expected to honor Bedell, the team did everything in its power to get the games in, including letting a gasoline fire on the infield to soak up the puddles. Using gasoline was not uncommon or uh, any other flammable uh, uh, liquid that you could put on it wouldn't necessarily uh, totally destroy the field. But, uh, and mostly what they did with it, they tried to keep it off the grass and uh, they would uh, spread it through cans on the, on the dirt portions where it was the wettest. And then of course, they, they, then they didn't have a lot of dry soil, they, they used sand. A lot of times sand was used, which made it really messy. The effort was worth it, as the second game of the twin bill produced a piece of R. Phil's history. Right-hander Steve Arlen was effectively wild, walking 10 York White Roses, the last four coming with two outs in the final inning as he registered the Arfels' first no-hitter. He was using a moving pitch, and uh, he was not getting a lot of strikes called. He was a big man, and when you're some of the big guys and early on in their careers, they haven't learned to bend their back and get themselves in top position to work top to bottom, and that, that really made a difference. Arlen got the 21st and final out of his no-hitter at 12.15 in the morning to complete the 9-2 victory and secure his place in Redding Phil's history, one of Redding's many golden moments.